So we work in a, uh, in a, a company called Oh Yeah Wow that Seamus and I run. The core five of us uh, at Oh Yeah Wow like, uh, all studied uh, animation courses um, and kind of like all kind of were like wrangled in by Darcy pretty much to, uh, you know, just try and make some cool stuff originally, not really even thinking about like a career or anything like that. It's kind of just a, a creative banner to put everything under. So whatever we do, design work or music videos or commercials, it's just kind of, it's bringing all, all that together so you can uh, use that to get more work for everyone involved. With Easy Way Out, I had this sort of reference point of Tango, which is a beautiful Polish short film. And it's gorgeous animation and it's a really, really um, engaging build-up of, of narrative. It has this kind of Eastern Bloc kind of vibe about it, very kind of Eastern European. And um, that was, in the end, the sort of look and feel that we kind of adhered to with the rest of the clip. I think with music video clips, you kind of either have to completely oppose what the song's about or kind of try and fit in with its rhythm and fit in with its kind of vibe a little bit. And in this case, we kind of decided to just adhere to what Wally had already created. And so we had these kind of characters that were literally stuck on loop. Wally's movement was a very important part of the clip to us because we wanted to replicate stop motion. So we ended up shooting him at a 25% speed, but we wanted to kind of treat him as if he was animated. Um, and so with his movements, we'd kind of direct him to be kind of quite quick to his pose and then slow down and then speed up again when he's kind of moving. So it's kind of like easing in and easing out. It's a sort of animation term used to describe cushioning um, and to kind of exaggerate movement. And each rotation was a new day shooting with Wally. And then so after we'd shot him, would then go and animate all the stop motion elements for the weeks after. We'd never built a large scale set before, we just worked in miniature with stop motion and uh, we were way out of our depth. We built a five bedroom house, basically a circular set. We've always had a very DIY approach at the studio, so I, I guess we chose the channel, um, a lot of the budget we had into um, the art direction and, and we made it look like a clip that was far beyond the budget provided, so that was always our intention. And by doing a lot of those jobs ourselves, we saved a lot of cash. Not a lot of time, but a lot of cash. It's only two minutes worth of work, but over nine months, um, you, know, you tend to tend to grow quite fond of it. So I'd say that would be my primary baby, I guess. I like to watch things that like that surprise me. Um, but like at its core, I think what makes a good music video is like is is something that adds to the song. I really like Bombay Bicycle Club, I think they make some great tunes. They had a new album like, that had just been released and uh, Das had the initiative to send them an email with, yeah. like, with a few pieces of work that we'd done and just said like, you know, we'll... How about it? <laughs> yeah, we'll do anything. <laughs> like, you know, this guy like wants to work with us, like he's... He's got skills. some crazy skills, like let's kind of almost build a concept to you know showcase him. In the morning that we're about to shoot, he sent me a text message saying that like he had a, like a meeting, meeting with his <laughs> IT or something like that. And it was like, what? So then we were left in the lurch obviously and, and we, we kind of thought, okay, well, well we'll take a couple of days off just to try and reconfigure here and I went down to Melbourne Central. There was this kind of group of young African kids sitting at the front, front of Hungry Jacks. I kind of stopped in my tracks and I thought, oh. like, what if one in a million, <laughs> one in a million, what if? what if? And I just went up and started talking to this group of about 15 African kids. And um, I just said, did, did any of you guys dance? And they kind of got up and go, yeah, we dance, yeah, we dance. Like this poppy and locking all over the place, yeah. all 15 of them. Like had a really cool vibe about them. Really great vibe. Before we knew it, we were shooting these guys and they're pulling backflips off walls and all sorts of crazy shit. Yeah, yeah. And it just fell into place so perfectly. In the end, like the, the guys that we found, were ten times better than the, the, the original guy and I had like a, a way better attitude like they were just like yeah yeah like let's have some fun and we're telling him like yo do dance moves like joke around whatever and they were just like rolling with it like they just it was complete improv so cool to work with people that are just like you know up for it and like just want to make the best product possible yeah. and they definitely were yeah <laughs> yeah 
I, I like to see music videos that push the evolution of the form. Um, I like to see sort of music video clips that are that are doing things differently and really kind of experimenting in strange ways and deviating away from what was done, say, in the 80s and 90s with a lot of performance-based stuff. Mm. And um, nowadays, I think they are becoming more of an artistic expression. The brief for Club Feet was pretty open because we'd already done a music video for them before. The original idea was a man going about his day in his house and you know, it was a frozen moment of him in the fridge or at the fridge and he was kind of going and collecting that. So I was trying to communicate a visual trick for the audience to be a little bit of ahead of what's going on in the clip. So they kind of, it's dramatic irony so they know what's going to happen before it's going to happen and it might not necessarily eventuate in the way that they think it's going to. And it was pretty heavily choreographed. We did, we did a lot of uh, pre-planning and we did some tests. Each choreographed moment came at an exact point in the song and I was just kind of sitting there at the back, on the back of a truck um, yelling out exact moments as they came up time-wise on the, on, the, on the clock and these guys had to, had to meet specific moments. In order to achieve lip sync in a slow motion clip, you have to play the song back on the set at twice the speed. It's pretty hard for the lead singer. He has to kind of sing at twice the speed he normally would, and when he has to kind of choreograph all these other movements at the same time, it can be quite difficult for him. So he didn't get it right all the time. And I had to go back in post-production and manually change his lips digitally and sort of line them back up again. It took about three months to do in post-production. I incorporated just a basic um, After Effects kind of technique into a into a cool concept. The technique uses one one clip, so there's no no multiple passes, and it basically uh, works by rotoscoping out a um, a single frame of footage of the person, which is just like cutting him out from the the footage and having that in a separate layer, and then like extending that time-wise so it runs for the whole length and then tracking that back into, into into its own footage as the camera moves so in essence like revealing each pose as the camera moves backwards. The concept stage is the most important. If you haven't got a good concept from the start then it's naturally flawed. M music videos are a perfect avenue to experiment with new ideas. I, I personally like music videos that, that um a concept heavy because I think concept is king. Yeah. Um, just the story is king, and um, I, I like clips with good stories and good concepts, and ones that grow and continue to expand as they kind of continue on.